Hello everyone, Rurikan here coming at you with another cons cast. I brought over Fighting Cowboy for us to talk a little bit about Wild Hearts. How it's you the, doing, Fighting Cowboy? It's it's the 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 convoy cast now because I'm here <laughs> Yeah, exactly. Okay. I was actually thinking about that the um, before we recorded this, I was thinking about dude, Cowboy's like most mostly the person who shows up to this. I need to I'm change just, the I'm, name. I'm just I'm just the monthly guest. <laughs> <laughs> one, no, we need, listen, we need we need to make it official and we do it a weekly. What do you think, huh? No, mm, that's that's maybe? a big commitment. I yeah, know. I know. Especially with I, I, have, know. I have a newborn in a month, so I'm not making any commitments. Right now. <laughs> yeah, I agree. How's so how's like, your hey, how's your current kids? I can't everything change. is everything good? Yeah, no, yeah, he's good? he's good. We're getting ready. Pregnancy's good. Um, just you know, yeah. nothing like having a newborn coming on top of the busiest game a month of the year. I'm super excited for that. It's, yeah, dude, it's this be like living hell. I know we've said it on previous podcasts as well, but like it has been exceedingly busy. Like I've barely yeah. been able to to play games properly. It's completely insane. But it's one hell of a start to the year. Like I've been having an absolute yeah. blast to start this year, dude. I've been way too busy, but a lot of really good games. Do you play Fire Emblem at all? I I have not. I've seen you play it a couple of times. I it's see you are you are very, fun, very in the Fire Emblem world. So the last one I played, I played Fire Emblem a lot growing up and then Three houses just burnt me out on the franchise. The whole like uh too much social stuff. Yeah, yeah. It's the same reason I can't get through Persona. I'm just like I like yeah. the RPG, but I I can't I can't I don't want to go to the batting cages again or work. <laughs> oh, I need to. Oh, I'm running out of money. I better go work my nighttime job as a teenager. <laughs> no, that's not fun to me, man. Like, just let me go back to. I want to <laughs> go. But, but there's a reason I love I love Shimigami Tensai, and that's the, yeah. that's why I like that, and not Persona, because I just want to hunt my demons and fuse them into bigger demons. Yeah. But uh, we're here today to talk about Wild Hearts. Uh, we both got early access from uh, EA, just to disclose all the all the stuff and whatnot. So um, we've been playing it for a while. You actually restarted uh, when it came when the embargo lifted. I've um, I am currently thirty something hours in, and I'm really I'm really far, enjoying. Far off. So <laughs> I, I I was I was checking my time on the old save. Uh, I was about twenty five hours in when I restarted. And I'm already another ten hours in again. Jesus <laughs> Christ! One one day of one day of streaming it. So yeah. Uh, yeah, I'm I'm having the funniest thing too is like I had like I had, like I don't do late night streams, but I had the baby go to bed last night, and I had a stream literally titled like I make bad decisions and I should be in bed or something yeah, like that. It, it was and, funny because like I checked that before we started the podcast, and I was like, wait yeah. a minute, eight hours ago? That doesn't seem right. Because like, wouldn't yeah. that be like? And then I saw the title of the stream, and I was like, oh no. <laughs> So so here I here I am streaming at like you know 1:30 in the morning still playing this game that I had played for basically 8 hours prior and like you have the person that comes in they're like so what do you think is it bad and I'm like yeah man <laughs> just, just terrible just playing 8 hours cuz it's terrible just not sleeping because it's bad yes you hit the nail on the head buddy good job like, the, ga the game is completely atrocious can't believe that ea would do something like this <laughs> dude uh, oh my god don't even get me started i've had no, but no listen we have to, we have to get oh. started these are going to be things that we have to discuss oh. now listen before before we get into it though um uh, did you what were your impressions before you actually got to play the game because like i remember when i watched it first i was, I was like, very hesitant me too hesitant. i was so super I was, I was, hesitant i was in the the pre pre preview where footage okay. came out before, game wouldn't even launch on my PC. Constant crashing. There was like me and four oh, yeah. people. The game would not boot. Um, I remember Eric, Eric's. Eric's gave you yeah, footage. Eric's gave me some footage. Yeah. And so I, I, you know, spliced some of that together. Talked over that, and and you know the event that we got to sit in on like a little press event and see stuff. And I was like, you know, this looks good. I haven't had a chance to play it yet. From what I'm seeing, uh, this looks like it might it might need work because it's hard to you know especially i think a big thing with this game is until you go hands-on with it and actually get used to the car curry system yep it's it's really weird seeing people try playing it for the first time and a lot of people are still learning um i think not not i don't want to throw them under the bus but i think with <laughs> it's all right it's funny uh rage <laughs> yeah, rage, 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 rage game rage gaming he's okay. you know, obviously big great sword guy at monster hunter big yes. big great sword guy Great sword fan. He put up a video like it was a an Adachi hunt from Wild Hearts, but he didn't realize that you can hold EI stance and attack. So the whole video is just him doing the stationary charge and trying to dodge around to unleash it on the monster. 
<laughs> and the, it, it was at embargo. So at the same time, I put up my tutorial like, yeah, you can charge an attack to get all fast chargers. It's the same damage. And then someone pointed it out and I go to the video and there's just people in the comments being like, you got to watch Cowboy's tutorial <laughs> how to play the Nadachi. And I'm just like, oh, man, it's, 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 like, it's just, but, but, the, but the point is, the point is like, here's the thing. Every, though, every, I, everyone's learning. Everyone's learning. No, but, it's, but listen, it's a brand new game. Here's the thing. If you go to my stream, I'm probably doing the same thing when I'm playing the Nodachi, like straight up, like, because the game doesn't tell you about the whole thing. Cause I, I saw it, it on your stream. It do it. I, I saw it on your stream that you were basically charging and then you press square or triangle or whatever. And then you come off with a faster attack. And I was like, oh, I didn't know you could do that. It was the same thing yeah. when. When you started doing like one of the finishing the combos of the like, katana, and I was what, like, "What, what the hell is that?" <laughs> I haven't seen, seen that move. <laughs> yeah, you gotta, I, I, I'm a, I'm a big experimenter. Yeah, but I found the, out I mean, even more. I the Nadachi actually clicked with me last night even more. Uh, I found out that you can do like your your springboard attacks. You can be holding EI stance, go off the springboard, go into a one two combo to instantly fill like sixty six percent of your gauge up. Damn! So so you and hold like so you hold the um the the stance and then you press the button. Yeah, yeah. Any attack you do yeah. while holding the stance builds your gauge. Yeah. yeah okay. But that is. But any, anyway, so 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 to uh to to rewind though, so yeah, back back before release, you know, no one really knew what they were doing. Yeah. Combat looked kind of kind of just sloppy. Wasn't really sure what was going on. Um, and the fact they didn't release a demo, I was like, mm. yeah, they're the, very, uh, I was extremely very hesitant. hesitant too. And then on yeah. top of it, you have obviously EA because, you know, EA has that reputation that, you know, some of their I, I games, think, it, it is what it is, right? We so they, they, yes, but I'm not going to throw them a lifeline here, but I do think we have seen a turnaround from EA in the last couple of years. Yes. That, it's, Cause, especially cause for Je me Jedi, Jedi, Jedi uh, Fallen Order Fallen Order was great it, was uh, amazing. it takes two I still haven't played it but like I mean at one game of the year I've heard it's yep. an absolutely amazing game uh, which is know, the, the, which is the thing that I pointed out to people sorry I cut you off it's the delay but like mean. it's it's the thing that I pointed out to people uh, which is listen this is EA but it is being published mm. under EA Originals which this is a label that apparently has put out quite a lot of good games because it's not just the takes two it was also the other game from Haze Light Studios the the one where it's like a, the two player thing on the split screen I oh, forget uh, the name Unravel? of it get, get, no get away get away something get out get something out. like get out yeah it, it's something oh, yeah. like that it, and and one of the things that always impressed me about that game is also the business model which is like if I buy that game you can play the game with you're, you're me cooperatively for yeah. yeah for free which I was like, that's that's a really cool business model. There's no microtransactions, no nonsense. And there's other games, like you said, Unravel. There's a bunch of games under the EA Originals label, which is why I was like, you know, this is something that it's worth to take a look. I'm still hesitant. I'm still all of this. Who knows what kind of stuff they're going to be pulling off. Well, I think... But, go so, on. so the thing a lot of people forget is that at the end of the day, EA is the publisher. They're not the developer. And the the example that I, I love to pull onto this, I use this as a... This is this is the buoy when I'm drowning. Uh, look at Sekiro. Who published Sekiro? Yeah, Activision. Activision and Activ. I would argue Activision is even more yeah, money dude. grubby than than e Activision. The micros, man. Activision. Activision would marry a microtransaction if they could. <laughs> and the 100%. fact that that the fact that they published Sekiro, but there wasn't a single micro. I'm like, listen. EA is here, and, and everyone's like, well, Koei publishes games. Why didn't Koei distribute? And the thing is, EA has a bigger reach than Koei. I love Koei's games. I grew up playing Dynasty Warriors. If you ask some regular person on the street, hey, you ever heard of Koei Tecmo? They're going to be like, K yeah, they don't Tecmo, know. Tecmo what? They don't know what it is. It's just some, and, it's a Japanese-sounding company, too. And not, and not only that, there, I don't know if that is. but like, I, I think that Koei was hesitant because I think that they noticed that with Toki then, right? They had something special. But because mm -hmm. of the way that they handled the release of that game, I th I would argue that's the reason why I didn't see that much success in the West, which is both of those games, Tokyo Then 1 and 2, released one year in advance in Japan. Tokyo Then 1 was a PlayStation Vita exclusive, which is just like... Just, that's <laughs> kind of weird. Yeah. <laughs> it's like, what do you, how do you expect to have success on that, unfortunately? Yeah. Um, but, um, you know, that's, that's one of the reasons why I feel like they didn't want it to do Toki then three. They wanted the new IP so that people wouldn't be like, Oh, this is Toki then three. What about the other two that I need to play them? This way it's more yeah. like, okay, here's this thing. It's new. It's going to have a global launch. It's going to do the whole shebang. 
And I feel like that was the reasoning why they were like, okay, let's team up with EA and they know how to do this thing in the West. Well, the, the other thing too is we got, so, so they are handling publishing and distribution of, uh, of Wo Long. And obviously that being a Game Pass day one, they have a lot of, a lot of Xbox help in, in getting promotion for that. But I think that's another part of it too. I don't know, but I have a feeling that because Koei is already handling so much for Wo Long, I think they didn't want to have to handle the dual publishing responsibilities for both Wild Hearts and Wo Long. So I think the team up with EA, it allows, because I mean, Ome Omega Force is obviously developing this, whereas Team Ninja is developing Wo Long. But I think it allows EA to do all the heavy lifting on, you know, distribution, promotion, you know, getting getting content creators keys for reviews, all that shit. Yeah. So they can focus on, on Wo Long on their side, which I think yeah. was a smart move because, because, you know, I mean, I'm excited for Wolong, Long, but even now, you know, if it wasn't for the fact that it's going to be an Xbox Day One Game Pass, I think it would have instantly been uh, fallen into the same niche that Neo does, where it's like, if you know it, you know it. But I think it being pushed by Xbox Day One Game Pass, I think it might actually see more success uh, than than Neo has in the past. Because yeah. Neo is still an incredibly niche game. I know what Neo is. You know what Neo is. You talk to anybody out of the Souls Souls born esque genre. Nobody knows what the fuck Neo is. They're like, yeah. what? what? Just Japanese so, company, Japanese game, Western audience doesn't get it. So having like a Western publisher definitely helped them out. And that's why they ended up not being the ones who published it. But um, the other thing that kind of surprised me was what they've said so far about the business model, which this yeah. is one of the reasons why I'm like super excited about it. And I want to see how much they stick with it because their business model right now is like, hey, listen, here's the full game. We sell you the full game. That's it. There's no microtransaction plans. I'm gonna I'm gonna be very curious to see a couple of months gonna, from now yeah. what's gonna happen because I made that very, very clear in my review. I said the review thing that we received explicitly states there are no plans for micros. Whether yeah, that holds exactly. true, we will see, but that is what they told us. So we're gonna you know. we're gonna have to see in the future what is going to happen. But like for now, at least, I think it's a pretty solid business plan because it focuses more on getting establishing kind of like a solid IP, which is like, hey, yeah. this is a new IP. We want to make sure that we capture a solid audience. This is the business model. All content moving forward is free. And hopefully they'll sell more, more videos, more video games that way. At least that is my yeah. hope because from what I've seen so far, I've really enjoyed the, the game. I've enjoyed well, everything so from, about it. Go ahead. From just a, a content offering perspective, and this is, this is the, the biggest comparison to Monster Hunter, that I think people should be looking at. Monster Hunter has a model of free content updates, new weapons, new monsters, etc. Wild Hearts is also planning on that. Yeah. Uh, Monster Hunter has been going heavy on micros lately. They're cosmetic, but they're still doing it. Wild Hearts right now is saying they won't be doing micros, which we'll see how long that holds true, but comparable. And the biggest selling point for me, at least, is day one crossplay. Yes. Which I really, really hope... Capcom sees because I, I I love Monster Hunter. Obviously, I have thousands of hours of Monster Hunter. But the thing that kills me with Monster Hunter is playing through in the entire damn game, and then a year later it comes out on PC, and then I have to play yep. through the entire goddamn game again. And there's not crossplay or cross save transfer or everything. And it's like part of me at first I was like, you know, it's a development cycle. And now I'm like slightly tinfoil hat, and I'm like, they're doing this because those fuckers know I'm gonna play the game again. And they're <laughs> they're make they're getting me to double dip they know i'm gonna do it they know they're gonna get another thousand hours out of me even though there's other things i want to focus on like i just I, I hope i hope capcom sees this and they go man wild hearts did cross-platform launch and cross-play we need to do the same yeah if that's I, the I only think, thing that comes out of it on the capcom side that's a victory right there i i think i think that is uh something that uh, i've definitely been told by the the pr team that like a hey, we really noticed what people said in the, the the surveys and stuff that they sent out. And that was like the biggest thing that everybody would talk about in the survey is like crossplay, crossplay, crossplay. Everybody yeah. would hammer on it. Everybody's been talking about it. And that is definitely something that they need to do for, for the next one. So crossplay is really cool. I, I actually really also wanted cross save though. I know it's one of those things though. We give you an no, inch, you yeah, want them out. It's, it's like, yeah, but to me it makes perfect sense because there's like, no reason. if you can cross play, why can't you cross save? Yeah. Have, because, it, have it be a, a cloud cloud based saves. Everything is cloud based saves these days. Yeah, we, because um, and for, unfortunately that's not the case for Wild Hearts. Like we we do have crossplay, we don't have cross saves. In case we didn't make that no. clear, and we, we but, do uh, have cloud saves with this. We have what? 
I said we do have cloud saves too, which yeah, is we interesting. Yeah, have, we so have cloud ahead. saves, but we don't have cross saves. Because in, in my case specifically, it'd be really cool because like I play here and then I play home because like here is not my yeah. home. I don't record in my house. Well, no, yeah. The idea is you, you, you're doing your work on the PC and then, yeah. you know, you're getting ready to go to bed and you're like, you know what? I think I just want to do a little bit of like casual farming, you know, go around yeah. and get, get some of the little things I'm missing and you just lay in bed and do that. Yeah, exactly. So th that that is something that I wish they had done. They didn't, but hey, at least crossplay. It is what it is. I'm focusing on, on that playing note, on. Oh, can I interest you in a Steam Deck, sir? <laughs> uh, <laughs> again with the Steam Deck. My my no. Steam Deck comes back today. I, I had to I had to ship her on in for service because one of the fans got loose, yeah. and I could like shake it and hear a fan rattle, and I was like, "We're getting into busy season. Can't have that." <laughs> but the, no, the warranty, dude. That the warranty. I I uh, I just put it in a box. I don't pay anything. It goes to Steam. They repair it or replace it, and they ship it on back. Yeah, but the thing is, you live in the states, my friend. See, if I'm in oh, Portugal yeah. mm -hmm. and I have like a broken fan, yeah, it's like two well, month delay on fan. Gabe Newell, why are you Russian all of a sudden? Gabe, this Gabe, special Gabe facility, come, <laughs> deck of Steam, come to us. Like, what? Wait, what? Gabe Newell goes like, you live where, sir? Where? Point that to me on a map. <laughs> they do. So they do. They do actually. One of the things I like a lot about them, um, online, they have like the blueprints for it, and you can buy parts and try to repair it yourself. It would yeah. voids the warranty, but they are very upfront about like. You can do this shit on your own if you don't want to send it to us, which is cool. But anyway, yeah. Wild Hearts, yeah. Wild Hearts discussion at hand. So um, what about the performance? How's your performance been? Because that's one of the so, things that I've talked about uh, quite a bit I've, in my I review. Have, my performance is flawless. Yeah, However, I literally just got a brand new rig. So like, and not just a brand new rig. Like I, I told It's them, a beefy boy. Yeah. Oh, it's, it's the beefiest of boys. Well, literally when I was talking, so I went with a power GPU after like, Shopping and shopping and shopping for for a good pre built company, and uh, and talking to them, I said, I just want the most bomb ass PC you have. I don't care how expensive this thing is. Jesus I want so this. So this thing is it's it's a forty ninety, obviously, um, thirteen nine hundred KS. The one that like after AMD dropped their new chip, Intel's like, well, we have this secret one that's actually going to hit six gigahertz. I was like, yeah, sure, throw that in there. Um, it's on like sixty four gigabyte of like DDR five RAM insane motherboard you know everything so yeah. like I, I boot up the game and i'm playing 4k ultra 70 80 fps and i'm like cool experience is smooth <laughs> but like i mean and even in my review i said that i was like you know i have had zero performance issues my rig is not indicative of the common rig yeah it's so bad. and i've heard i've heard that performance is i've heard a lot of people even with like 3080 ti's are like chugging with the game so it sounds like uh from, from me Pre-review standpoint, I think I think performance is going to be what brings down their scores the most. Yeah, I I, I think that uh, potentially people that are struggling, they're probably trying to run it at 4K because I tried running it at 4K on my 6900 XT, and mm. it ran and it was playable. I I think it was hitting about 40 FPS, give or take. So it's not like super smooth, but if you're going yeah. for 1440p, it should be pretty solid. Uh, if you have like a, a again, I think the 6900 XT is still kind of like a beefy GPU. It's not like the top line anymore, but it's still pretty good. So, yeah, you know, if you have like still something up there, you can still do 1440p just fine. But I feel yeah. like for the... It sounds like the, they, they need optimization. Basically. Yeah. The visual detail that we have on display, I feel like the current hardware that I have should be able to perform better. But at the same time, I also pointed out something that I think is important, and that is how dynamic these maps are which I think greatly influences the performance of the game as well. Like the fact that you can just put like a bunch of vines everywhere and you can put like yeah. custom buildings and all of this crazy stuff that has to impact performance somewhere. Right. Well, and I, I even noticed like uh, a large chunk of the environment, there's like heavy destructibles. Like I was watching a grit dog yeah. the other day, just rolled through something and this whole thing came collapsing. And within like five seconds, it just it vanished off screen because you know, the game was like, Okay, if that resource happened, get rid of it. <laughs> we we need to focus on other stuff here. Um, so yeah, I mean, I, and and honestly, like that's that at the end of the day, that will get patched up. Um, yeah, you know, no 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 game is going to release. I mean, it, it games shouldn't release as unoptimized as they are. I feel like it's a growing problem in the industry. Um, there's there's ironically there's a whole subreddit dedicated to this called Patient Gamers. <laughs> it's just. It's just it's just like people that they don't they refuse to buy games at launch because they're gonna wait until that shit is optimized and running smooth. 
Yeah. Uh, and it, it, it is a problem. And I think that's going to be the, I think that's going to be the biggest pain point for them in reviews. I don't yeah. know. How, have, you played, have you tried it on console at all? I've, I've been exclusively playing on console because I mean, I, I played PC just to test it out, but I play console because then I can take the console home and yeah. you know, I can play at home because I, I can't even begin to imagine playing this on my laptop on a 1070. Oh God, no. no, no, no. <laughs> that was, was, was going to be terrible. Some, I've, heard the, I've heard people say the Xbox performance is like really bad. What's PS5 like? Uh, PS5 is actually fine if you play it on performance mode. Like the only thing is that uh, it's it's rendering at 1080p, so it's not yeah. like the prettiest looking thing, and you can see some of the textures, and you're like, oh wow, these these don't look as sharp as some of the other stuff That's that you see PC, in the game. Yeah. But it's it's like it's not the end of the world. the The thing is, if if you're trying to run this on 4K, good lord, it looks terrible. Like there's something really <laughs> weird going on when you go to 4K on on PS5 because the monsters almost seems like they have some kind of weird morphing texture that trails as they move. Oh, and wow. it is, it is like, dude, it is weird as hell. Like it's playable. Like I showed this on my video. It's playable. You can play it. It runs at about 30 FPS and it's kind of okay. But the monsters look really weird. They just look weird. I don't like it. It's almost like there's just, like a transparent oh. tarp on top of them that kind of like moves around as they move. It's a really weird thing. I can't explain it. And something that I noticed too, this this might be a bug that they need to patch out, is that if you go into 4K and then you swap back to 1080p, the game gets like a visual glitch on the foliage, which is also really weird. I had to like restart my game whenever I swapped between modes. I actually closed the application and reopened it. So there's definitely some technical stuff going on there that they need to sort out in patches. But if you just play it performance on console, like I said, as long as you're okay with 1080p, it runs just fine, no problems. Every now and then there's the occasional drop frame, but besides that, it's pretty okay. Yeah, I mean, I'm, I'm just glad I got the new PC. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, dude. Uh, like on, this shit's running super smooth for me, man. On, like, on PC, it, it's, it sucks it's though. I, I, I was, uh, before I went to bed, I like looked up the Wild Hearts subreddit to see like, you know, people were excited and it's like every other post was people just upset with the performance and i'm like Ugh. yeah it doesn't surprise me so what about the um the karakuri system that was something that everybody was like at the when you first see it you're like oh my god it's fortnite in my monster hunter like what the hell like is going it. on i like it more than monster hunter okay i like it so I, when i when i when i when i when i so all right right up front i am a builder uh, the best example. I've never played Minecraft, but like, you like survival forest, games. I think that's important. I do. I love yeah. survival games. Like, and we were playing the forest with friends. We had like six or seven of us in the forest. And my buddies are like, uh, online it says there's like a chainsaw down in this cave. We're gonna go find it. And I'm like, okay. And I just spent like three hours just building the base and setting up zip lines. And I was like, yeah, if I cut down trees from here, they now have a log flume that they, <laughs> they flow straight down to base. Like, I love, I love doing stuff like that. So having the ability to just be like oh there's a cliff here not a problem i have boxes oh i want to go over here zip line over here and doing that in monster hunter a game a genre i already like yeah i like that a lot and the thing here is to me this this it uh it almost feels like a, a, a fusion like it has because it has the the bigger uh more robust world design that we see in world Mm -hmm. But it has the verticality of Rise. And not only does it have the verticality of Rise, I think the verticality in this is better than Rise. I mean, the thing is, Rise's maps are a lot more simple than yeah. the maps in this game. They're way more simple. Like, you can go across one of Rise's maps, like, in a couple of minutes. You're just like, oh, go yeah. over here, boop, 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 boop. Do it, and you just, yeah, like, yeah. wire bug around, all of that stuff. Uh, in this game... It's more about you figuring out, okay, where do the fights take place? Which you kind of learn after you do a couple of hunts in a map. You're like, okay, there's a, a kind of like an arena over here. There's an arena over there. And you know kind of like where you need to go. And then it's about planning out, oh, I want to post zip lines everywhere that go to this place. And I want to put a camp here. Yeah. And I want to put a detection tower here. And it's kind of like a little mini game in and of itself to kind of optimize that and get things on lockdown. Like figuring out, figuring out your zones, yeah. So I'm, I've, I've really... I really like that and not not just that but the um so once you get i mean like i think back to monster hunter world when we got iceborne and we had to make that adjustment to the clutch claw how it was an integral yeah. part of the hunt and to be honest it wasn't a fun part of the hunt it was just like every 
what was it every two and a half minutes or what, what was the what was the the tenderized duration on clutch Club? I, I i don't remember because i play gunland so i don't care oh. well, it, was, it was basically it was like every every three minutes i'm gonna clutch your face i'm gonna hit you twice i'm gonna smack you into a wall i'm gonna do damage yeah and like it just became second nature um whereas by comparison the uh the wire bugs like yeah they are a gimmick but they felt like a lot more natural extension of the hunter it didn't feel like like uh like the wire bug riding i never felt like i had to do wire bug runs or, or rides if i wanted to get extra materials i'm like oh i'm mounting you and i'm slapping you three times and i'm throwing you into a wall to get those mats but like whereas in iceborne i felt like i had to clutch claw i never felt like i have to do wire bug rides the wire bug system itself with like uh wire falling and enhancing the moves and whatnot that just seamlessly flowed into the combat and that's what the car curry system does it's it's not like a you're gonna have to use your car curry if you want to be successful like you are absolutely but it feels more like an extension of you as a hunter versus like this gimmick mechanic that oh you have to do it if you don't put out your boxes you can't you know you can't win like well you want to put out your boxes because you do three boxes with the katana you're getting a fat freaking aerial attack that's cool not just oh, the, the katana running. i'm gonna, I'm gonna spring weapons. after it yeah, yeah yeah all the well the katana in particular you get there's a bonus for going three box versus one box that's it's, it's just with the katana tell, i haven't seen a difference between three versus one box on the other weapons the katana specifically even says it in the notes that the three box is enhanced yeah i, I remember in the tutorial of the katana they said three boxes so basically for every other no. weapon i always just use three boxes moving forward i was just like no. every time i mean, I I mean you're always yeah you're I always, always going to be uh always going to be higher but yeah it's going to be yeah, safer the katana, too the, yeah the katana attack is actually enhanced but i mean it's just once once like one of the first things i did was i rebound my buttons so like my springboard i put on b and my my crates i put on a just because a is already jump and b is already dodge so yeah. just naturally associating with those buttons and once you get used to it 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 feels really good yeah it does I mean, it, you're it, just you're it's flowing. surprising you're just flowing it's surprising how fast you can put the stuff down because initially you might think to yourself, oh my God, but I'm stacking these things and it stacks yeah. all the way up to three and what if I mess it up and whatnot, but it has a, a reasonably good lockdown. There are situations where you are going to start panic spamming and the, the combination oh God, that dude. you want is not going to happen. <laughs> dude, I had, I had one with uh, last night. I was late. I was fighting the grit dog and I was trying to get down the elemental lantern. And I was like, hey, wait, hey, hey, wait. And instead, <laughs> there's just a pile of gliders and crates and no <laughs> elemental lantern. And I'm like, I'm fucked. <laughs> or, or the other one, I had a, I was, I was fighting the boar and I panic spammed and I tried to get up. I was like, duh, 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 duh. And instead, I ended up going three crates, two crates, two crates, one crate. And I was like, oh, no. <laughs> and then it just. It just plowed me for like 75% of my health. And I'm the, like, oh. It was the same thing for me. At one point he was coming in and for some reason the angler, which I started laying down the karakuri, it made like a tiny little wall, like a triangular wall. And I was like, yeah. no. And then he just like yeah. plowed through, killed everything. But, you know, th there are situations where you will panic spam and, you know, bad yeah. things are going to happen. Just like when you panic roll spam in a Souls game or when you panic roll spam yeah. in, in Monson or whatever, bad things can happen. But normally the, the system works just fine because the stuff automatically tracks where it's the next piece is supposed to go. And you yeah, can do some click. Yeah, it, 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 you, you can do some really interesting stuff like um, you have the, the repeater crossbow, which I think you haven't unlocked yet, that I just straight up to turret fires at flyers and brings them down, kind of like the, the fireworks thing. Uh, yeah, yeah, dude, it, it's really cool. And it keeps firing like shotgun blasts I'm gonna, I'm at I'm going to get there today. So I've been, I've been, um, I wanted to get caught up to what I had deleted on the first save. So I'm at yeah. the, st I, I, I beat uh, Big Boy. Are we what, what what level of like spoiler we talk are we doing? Do you just want to? I mean, uh, he shows up in the trailers. Oh, all right. Well, anyway, I beat you know who I'm talking about. I beat Big yeah. Boy. Um, and I and I'm, I'm I was going through the weapons because there is a the rightmost weapon tree. If you go down, it goes like Grit Dog, Grit Dog, Big Boy Tree, and it's it's like uh it's like Diablo's weapons, like insane damage, but minus twenty percent infinity. But yeah. the damage is so insane that Adachi is like. 527 or something like a ridiculous <laughs> oh number God. yeah yeah Five, 500 and, is a lot guys okay i know that some yeah. of you are not going to understand but yeah 500 is a ton it's like it's a triple what most of the weapons are um yeah. but the biggest thing is the weapons have a unique perk uh for him 
And so uh, I don't remember what the mall was, but like the Nodachi perk is that uh, you, once you're fully charged, I don't, I don't know if this is how it works, but the way it's described is like when fully charged, you get, uh, you can poise through attacks. You're not knocked back. And I'm like, Ooh. if that, if that, cause there's so many times I'm like, I'm like trying to get the level three charge and I'm in the middle of about to come down and I get hit. And if I can poise through that, it's over. Yeah. That's, I know that the, the, uh, the car curry staff is just a flat 10% boost to all of your transform attacks, which is insane. Um, what other ones? The, the cannon was pretty vanilla. It was like how fast you deploy and pull up your key zones. Uh, the Kari Kuri Katana. I don't, I don't know. Anyway, check check that tree out. There's some there's some cool stuff there for sure. But so I've been yeah, that, pushing and pushing and getting that and getting all the weapons. And I'm finally gonna go. I'm, I'm gonna kill the chicken a couple times to get the firework. But I'm gonna go uh, go zone three today. And start unlocking all the new stuff. Yeah. The um. I, I'm surprised that you haven't gotten the fireworks. Do you have the torch equipped? Yeah. Well. So what? I had the fireworks in the preview, and then yeah, I only I've, hunted I've, the I've chicken the, once. Okay. But I was just beating his ass, and the firework prompt never came out. You you need to wait until he enrages, because when he enrages, he starts flying. Yeah, he, he does the fly. Yeah, he did. I just didn't get the prompt. Okay, yeah. But because I was the, doing the, some some damage though. I was doing yeah. some mean damage. To, to beat, give you guys an idea, fought, get, give me just a second. Just 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 let people know because they're like, what what is he talking about? Learn the fireworks. So so there's a, a mechanic in the game, which is you can learn some of the karakuri by just like going down a karakuri tree, which is super extensive. It is massive. Yeah. But there are some karakuri that you need to learn by having something that they call divine inspiration while you're in combat. So, for instance, you see a monster flying, and that is going to uh, trigger you learning, oh, he's flying, I can maybe do this karakuri thing that fires a flash bomb, and that explodes, and that grounds yeah. him, right? But you have to, a lot of them you have to unlock that way. So, yeah, like at the start, at the start it's a very basic. And then, uh, you know, like, I guess the, the most simple example is the boar. When the boar first charges at you, it tells you make a big wall. And you're like, oh, yeah, of course. But yeah, so I got I got to unlock the fireworks still. But yeah. the um, um, God, what was I saying? What was I saying? Yeah, I'm sorry, I interrupted you to explain. That. No, no, you're good. I know we're just going. We're, it's like it's like <laughs> a bunch of toddlers just it's like, about well, what they're talking about. Well, well, anything. while you're thinking about that, so an, a very interesting thing is you were talking about going down the the weapon tree. A very interesting thing that they also do with the weapon tree is that the path oh. that you take actually matters because you can inherit skills from certain weapons. And so the path that you take could be like, oh, I could go straight down and get this fire weapon, or I can go to the right, and then on the path to the fire weapon, I can collect this other skill. So for instance, the bladed uh, Wagasa, which is the umbrella weapon, I was, uh, in, in a video that I recorded today, I was going like, okay, I, I, I'm going to upgrade this fire thing. Then I noticed, oh, if I go from the left, I can actually get an additional skill that makes the gauge of the Wagasa charge faster so basically I can get that and then go into the fire weapon and inherit that skill from there. And I was like, this is awesome. But then on top of it, they let you basically backtrack everything and give you all the materials yeah. back. The only thing you spend is gold. And I was just like, dude, you know how you're all, sometimes, you know, you get a really rare material and you're like, oh, I really got to figure out which weapon I'm putting this on to, yeah. so that it's you efficient. It, you try it. If that weapon sucks, you refund yeah. it. Yeah. You, it's you, crazy. You, I like it this a lot. one. You just like, you just refund it. You get the materials back, which is awesome. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I was gonna say, did you hunt the crow yet? Yes, that thing is annoying as hell. That's how I Bro, got the, I, the repeater. I, okay, so I was going after the something. I was farming uh, uh, the, the sap, sap scourge, and then I yeah. saw the crow, and I was like, I wanna fight this thing. And like, I was way too low for it. Yep, me too. I, dude, I pulled in my parry god with the Wagasa. I parried the crow into oblivion, and I beat its ass. It was like a 25 Good minute job. hunt, but I beat it in like two star gear. <laughs> it was just, just, and it would do its swoop, and I'm like, bing, no, do its swoop, bing, no, like just whooped it down. Um, Damn, that that's yeah. because like the first time I went up against him, he beat my ass, and I was like, okay, I'll Dude, come I, back I later. Had no Thank Dachi, you. And he he, I was just struggling to even get up with those swoops. I think it was it's fast, it's yeah. very fast and aggressive. Um, Andy Andy poisons you, yeah. which is even more annoying. But yeah, well, but po poison's definitely not nearly as annoying in this game as it is a monster hunter. No, most like, ailments don't game, seem to be. Yeah, it's like it's something to deal with, but you're not like, like I mean, poison and monster hunter will will absolutely kill you. Like, you don't fix it, you're you're gonna lose half your health if not more. But they they have armor sets that make it so that when you heal yourself, you can also recover uh, from ailments as well, which yeah, is actually something go, that I might get. 
if you want to go f- full human path like a scrub. Oh, somebody's going kimono path. Ooh. Fuck yeah, dude. I, well, I, I mean, considering I, the, the grit dog boots have resurrection on them. Oh, yeah, I, kimono, I see. I see where you're going that, for that. That's a big, that's a big perk. Yeah, I'd, big I'd, perk. For, the, for those for those confused with the armor, you can um, you can make your armor go more towards human or more towards kimono, more towards beast. And uh, so, so let's say the base set has ten defense. When you when you upgrade it to human or beast, it's gonna like double the defense, so up to twenty. And there's certain skills that'll only unlock depending on which way you go. So, you know, there's, for example, the human side has the one Rory's talking about where your, your normal heal will also cure all ailments. Uh, there's one that I have that I like on the kimono side where it's, uh, it's like grit. Like you'll always withstand an attack with one HP. And so you got to kind of, you got to pick and choose. Like, well, yeah. do I want to go See, that's, throw all my human perks, throw all my kimono perks? Which that's, one that's, one of the, that's one of the things that I haven't really done yet because, like, I, look, I looked at all the skills and I'm just like, uh, there's, not, there's not really anything that's instantly calling, um, calling me to there's, any of the sides. So, there's one so, I found. Not an armor skill, but there's a talisman kill called a... Uh, I have to look it up. It's like heavy armor or something. But it just lets you... Uh, when you're gathering uh, Karakuri thread, you, you one-tap everything. You walk up to the tree, boom, thirteen. Walk oh. up to the rock, boom, thirteen. So it's that, is that human? Like, no, it's just it's a talisman skill of all things. Oh, but one because you were one out of five. I thought it was related to one of the the two paths that we no, were talking no, about. No, you yeah. just you gotta find it and just pick that up, man. But Super but good. basically today the game put me in my place because like I haven't upgraded my armor for so long. I've been just like butchering everything, oh, not having yeah. a problem. I ran up into um into Wolf Boy. Wolf Boy didn't like me. He didn't from the trailer or from that. Yeah, opening? yeah, dude. Yeah. He beat the crap out of me, dude. Yeah, that thing. That thing seems fast. Even when I was when I restarted, I remember the opening against it. I was like, let's see what I can do, and it very quickly dawned on me that without like springboard and anything, I wasn't dodging half a shit. Oh, dude, like, no, this, no. This is gonna be you th- you think he's fast now? You have no idea. You have no yeah. idea. He's a bit I'm of sure, a bit. I'm sure. And I was going, I was going Wagasa against him, which, uh, yeah, that's that weapon require is going to have a very high skill ceiling. I feel like Wagasa. Yeah. I honestly, I like the Wagasa a lot, but I do wish the move set were a little more advanced on it. Um, just because for so for for the baseline of the move set, I mean, you have you have your square you combo. Have, like, you, yeah, yeah, and your then you square have your combo. Jump up. Yeah. And and the, the basic flow I do of combat is like you go square combo into triangle, which will charge and launch you into the air to an aerial combo with X to triangle to dive on down. And then see, you but, rinse and repeat. See, no, no, but see, you're doing something wrong there. You have to parry because when you parry, even, even it's not well, about yeah, yeah, but I, I mean I mean outside no, wait, of parries. Wait. If you parry no, no, but combo, that's, it's obviously whatever. But that's the thing. What I'm saying is I'm not talking about parrying as in actually parrying. I'm talking about doing the parry animation because after the parry animation comes a different move set. Well, after the parry animation, you'll you'll launch forward with Y, but you'll do that. No, 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 no. You go into square and the square attacks are different. That's how you do the thing where he throws the umbrella and it goes like, and then it comes back. You haven't seen that yet? Ah, I found something you haven't found yet. <laughs> See, I have I haven't seen it, but it's because the so only the time way- I do parries, I'm hitting parries. So you know, oh, I haven't just like I haven't just like whiffed and seen this move set yet. No, no, but the the idea is the idea is you use the parry animation as a combo extension on the square combo. You, you st- you're taking notes. Right <laughs> I'm, gonna, I'm gonna hang on a second here. Let me see you're not, you're not gonna be that. able. You're not gonna be able to see the special animation because you need to be at least level one on the gauge, in order to to mm. to be able to see it. Because the the thing is, when you're not in level one of the gauge, the combo is a certain way. When you're in level one of the gauge, the combo that comes after the parry is different, and it lets you throw the umbrella, which is really really cool. Like the first time I the, saw I'm that. Go to the training dummy while we're in this conversation to do. <laughs> <laughs> I, need to, I need to check this out. But, but not just that, but I, I, I think, again, I'm not 100% sure, but I think that when you do the square combo after the parry, uh, it also increases gauge a little bit more than usual. Same thing as well, jumping so any, from any, boxes. Anytime, so your, your parry itself is going to give you a big chunk of gauge. And then yes. on top of that, I find that after parrying, not just do you get a chunk, but it seems like the umbrella enters like an empowered state almost. And so any attacks after a parry are going to fill you up much, much faster. Yeah, 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 yeah. A ton. 
it, it, because the the move set changes basically. Yeah. But um, but yeah, I need, the, I need to see this umbrella throw you're talking about. <laughs> well, so what what I've been doing, I've been I've been breaking it down to. I want to pick four of the eight weapons to focus on. To be my Dude, you, you you look like you're an angelical figure right now in the camera. This it's is just, great. It's, 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 <laughs> this massive it's a, white the, the blinding the blinding starting light of Wild Hearts. <laughs> um, but so the the uh, the Karakuri staff, obviously, I have to use that. It's too it's too yeah, cool to kinda, not use. Karakuri staff. I, I remember in my stream when I first showed everybody the actual finishing move for Karakuri and I just hit the training <laughs> dummy for 3,000 damage. People were like, wait, yeah. what? I was yeah. like, yes. I, I, think, I think that's the single strongest attack in the game. It I haven't is. seen anything out, outclassed. It, it's, it's nutty. There's nothing that even comes close yeah. to it. The thing is, building up that gauge can be really it annoying. It takes a minute, yeah. But, but the, I think that what I'm predicting that people are going to do with the Karakuri staff is, you know how there's certain skills that give you stealth so that Kimono don't necessarily detect you. And then there are yeah. other skills, I think, that give you surprise attack or whatever it is. So the oh, Kimono so doesn't see you. So they're going to pre... Bunga sword. <laughs> yeah, they're going to pre-charge... I haven't tried this yet. It probably works. Well, you, because you, you, like you no, can... You can't. I know, I know exactly what you're going to say. You'll lose the gauge before you get to the monster. It depends on where the monster is, because if there's a small yeah, dude how you, near how, the monster, the only thing you'd be able to charge it that far on would be the training dummy. So you'd have to go from training. No, dummy. but but you kill you kill a bunch of small dudes, and then it's fully charged. Those small dudes are going to die in a single hit. Are you going to be able to get off? No, eight no, 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 no. attacks. No, no, because you're not going to charge it on one. You're going to kill a bunch of them. You're going to just farm know, a bunch of I'm small saying, dudes. So, so right, with with the Karakuri staff, you need to get off. The the charge attack has to actually make a connection. Yes. For you to even get get charge, so you're gonna have to. I mean, most of the, for example, the the uh, how you throw out the giant shuriken, and then the follow up hit is the transform. They would die to just the shuriken. You're not even gonna get that transform off. Uh, I don't know. Further ahead, they become a little bit more resilient to small dudes. But, but like I said, that's what I'm thinking that people are probably gonna do. And the thing is, you can also just create a training dummy. So you can just create a training dummy anywhere recharge it yeah. go to the monster and then unload on him uh, again i'm just saying this because that's that, basically that is, what i did the, uh, the other day with the uh, with the cannon like I, I basically charged the cannon on a small dude got my laser and just opened up on lava bag with like hey bzz, so wait how do you all right i got i'm up to level two how are you throwing the umbrella do the parry and then spam oh, the square combo. Oh. <laughs> oh, oh, okay. Little, Dude, little that thing enough. deals so much damage, you have no idea. That thing is wow. Yeah, that's, that's like one of the strongest yeet. move of the Wagasa. Do, 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 do. Yeah, it's doing a 55 for spin. <laughs> 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 Well, so, so, all right, um, and th th it's good I booted this up because this is what I wanted to talk about real fast. This is, this is slightly getting off topic of the impressions and more just, yeah. just favorites. So um, I'm going to change equipment here. So uh, what I've been doing is I like my Karakuri staff. Obviously, that's staying. That's considered a, a slash type. But then I've been deciding between the others. So uh, I know you're going to say Maul between Maul, dude. Maul is so those, good. Those are, those are both the blunt. So I, I really like the cannon. So I'm probably going to focus cannon instead of Maul. Um, for piercing, what do you think? Bow or Wagasa? Because the bow Wagasa, is super fun to dude. play in this game. But the Wagasa, no, Wagasa just dude. claps. What gas is beast mode? Forget about the bow. I saw you playing bow yesterday. It was it was pretty <laughs> pathetic. I'm sorry. <laughs> what? <laughs> what? Dude, the bow is wild. You are out of your mind in this no, game. No, it is. It it is. It is. And did and you, you did listen, you know that you so have the best thing? Seen... The best thing with the bow. The Go best thing. It. Listen to this. This I just I, I discovered this yesterday. Uh, so if you are if you're in the sideways shots, the the higher shots, and you're just filling those, you can use a uh, a jump to detonate them. So. The new way I play bow is I'm actually I'm testing it right now to see what the damage is. But the the jumping shot you just you know you 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 go off a crate aim that is considered a uh, a toya shot so it'll detonate. Yeah. So, so you you haven't so you even seen even the coolest to... shot in the game though. I told you about this shot. You haven't seen oh, yeah, it the, because the stake. Yeah. The stake. You've seen that. No, but I'm about. I'm gonna get there today, so it's okay. Yeah, yeah, dude. Like that. The, you know that he pull he pulls the bow with his feet when you do that shot. So that sounds <laughs> like people are going to get weirdly horny about it, I think. But, uh, for the record, I just, I just tested it. So the, uh, the aerial, the uh, going off the crate, a Toya finisher, it is in between a level one and level two standard charge. It's, it's a beast. It's, it, the, the bow is really beastly, but I think the problem 
was yesterday you were fighting it on a king tusk, which is too big, and you weren't able to detonate a lot of the arrows a lot of times, yeah. which is annoying. Yeah, that was, that was the problem. Right, I'm turning off my game for now. But, um, <laughs> so Blade, Blade, what do you think? Nodachi or Karakuri Katana? Uh, Karakuri Katana. Nodachi is, uh, you got to put a wedding ring on it, dude, with all that commitment. Yeah. There's, there's too you much do. commitment. <laughs> but See, but it's like, at first... Dude, I'm torn. I was so I, 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 uh, bad, 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 bad. early access. I was I was leaning towards Nadachi, and then I was like, man, unbounding the katana and going like aura, aura, aura anime style is yeah. pretty fun. But then I realized I like the Nadachi clicked, and I'm like, oh, I can springboard and charge my EI slash, and I started liking the Nadachi more again. And now I'm like, oh, oh. I, I don't know. It, it it all depends on the monster that you're fighting. There's definitely going to be monsters where one's going to be efficient, more efficient than the other. Uh, for me, it's yeah. more just so the the commitment to the the charging thing. It's it's a little bit too much with how fast some of the monsters move. Which again, people who are want to master that they can, and there's things that yeah. you can do to work around it. One, one uh, of the things that that's been really pissing me off though with the katana lately is I feel like every time I get my unbound state, I'm like, here we go, ching, whip it out. And the monster leaves. Yup, and I'm like, you little, and, and so you can you can sheath it and you can save it, but still, I'm like, you little, bitch. it does it doesn't really save much. It drains even when it's. Well, no, 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 no. If you if you do if you do uh, not sheath if you do uh, right trigger and B, it un unbounds it. Oh, okay. So you can like if you if you unbind it and the monster starts running, right trigger B, and you'll you'll keep like seventy five percent. So your mm -hmm. gauge will stay basically right below full, but it's still annoying. Because, I don't know, I feel like I need something that extends the unbound duration. I'm sure there's a perk for it. There's, there's like, probably I'll, going to I'll, be. I feel like lately I, I unbind and then, you know, because that's your damage. Is yeah, the exactly. Katana. And I unbind and then the lava back wants to just start making lava pools everywhere. And I'm like, man, I'm not even getting damage in here. <laughs> and it's like, I don't, I don't just want to sit on it because, you know, it's not, it's not like... Like the uh, the car curry staff, yeah. You sit on that until you have an opportunity. Because if you whiff that, that's you, that's you a big can't, loss. You can't sit on it, sit on it for very long, though. That's the thing. Like I, I saw I saw yeah, well, some you of got, your you got like thirty seconds. I, I saw some of your footage against the grit dog from yesterday. It wasn't looking too good. <laughs> yeah, dude, that the grit, grit, grit dog, dog was having his way with you, dude. Dog. I I was bullying him with the umbrella afterwards. I, yep. I uh, you know his like boom 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 boom. boom. You can parry that. So I just let him vacuum me in, and I'm like, "Do it, you bitch, do it." <laughs> just no, I I love when he does that. You know why? I'm like, okay, do 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 pounder. It interrupts it. It just straight up interrupts it. it just I've, gets so pounded I've, in the face. So you I've, just get to do free damage. I'm so paranoid trying to pound it. I've only pounded it once because I'm always like, I'm getting vacuumed in, and I'm like, it's gonna pull. It's gonna you know, pull me in front and I'm going to just, instead I'm going to have like spring, 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 spring and a horizontal <laughs> line. So I'm very, very hesitant about using pounder on that. Um, um, the, the thing is also like, if he does it with the enrage, you can't stop it with the pounder because he breaks the things out instantly. The moment you start uh, placing it down during the enrage, it's like, nope, breaks. Yeah, that's, that's, that's one of the things I really like about this game though, is you get, you get the fusion Karakuri and, yep. you know, you, so you you have the obvious scenarios like birds in sky use firework, board charging use wall, but you can use the wall on, like, on on the rat charge on the the yeah. uh, grit dog charge. And there's and it's a, not as the, yeah there's there's, there's a smaller tells. wall. There's a smaller yeah. wall too, that you're going to unlock. Yeah yeah, I, I've, I've dude I've unlocked it on, on a new monster that I went through. I I don't want to spoil it for you, dude. But there's a no, no there's a monster no in the, yeah there there's a monster in the third area. He's a hedgehog looking dude. You're oh, going to see like, something. Well, yeah, I, I, well, I saw, I saw the, in the, the press packet, you know, they, I scrolled through it and there was visuals of a lot of the monsters. Yeah. But yeah, I just yeah, yeah. Like went past. No, them. no, but you haven't, you haven't seen his animations though. The animation is the thing that's important. Like when you see one yeah. of his attacks, you're going to be like, what, what is that? It's really cool. It's, it's just really cool, dude. I'll, I'll leave that one as a surprise for you for you to see it. I mean, I mean, that's, that's today. Today's goal is going to be all all new stuff yesterday i pushed to get my car curry staff unlocked and today is going to be all new, new region, things new content how new are you finding too. how are you finding the monsters which is something that i always find that people have a lot of criticism towards like people are saying oh the monsters aren't inspired the names are bad and it's like i'll i'll give them the thing about the names some of the names are like you know uh friggin dread claw you're just like okay <laughs> it, is, it doesn't it doesn't bother me but i i can see where people are coming from 
But besides the names, some people are saying that I mean, the monsters are, are uninspired. So I, I, and I'm just I don't like personally, I don't, I don't personally mind names because names you're either you're, you're going to go two two approaches with naming monsters. Either you're going to have a thematic name like Dreadclaw, or you're going to have a, a a just appropriate name like Vulcana. You know, yeah, or a Magnamalo. Like, oh, that's that's called a Magnamalo. But they just as I mean, they just as easily could have been like Fire Tiger. <laughs> and strike. Like, I mean, you know, ah, whatever. Yeah, we're going to go hunt fire tiger today. <laughs> but like, you know, it's, I, I don't know. I, I don't mind. And they're not, they're not that on the nose. Like looking through the, the PDF, I'm just, we're just going to, I'm just going to call out names here. I can, I can tell you some of the names. I know them by head. Rage tail, sap scourge, King yeah. tusk, lava golden, back, golden, golden tempest, uh, death stalker, Gold Shard, Spine Glider, uh, Dread Claw, uh, Fume Beak, Spore Tail, Ice Tusk. So yeah, I mean they're they're they are fairly uninspired names. Yeah, exactly. Um, That's what I'm saying. I mean, I don't know, man. I'm I, honestly like shit like that though. Names. Uh, people are like mm, the story didn't quite quite vibe with me. I don't give a fuck. I actually, I'm here to hunt monsters for a thousand hours and make sets. I don't care yeah. if if it was if it was literally named Fire Monkey. I'm still gonna <laughs> fucking hunt it and kill it and make armor from its core. But it's like besides besides the name because like I was saying, some people are besides saying that the they name, feel the, I, the I, design, I'm having the I designs like are uninspired. They're, they're saying that the designs of the monsters are uninspired, and I wanted to tackle no. that a little bit. I'm like. I don't no, agree bro. with that. Yeah. Like I, I think the, the that whole the whole thing was was real life animals fused with nature. With nature, yeah. And they've done an awesome job at that. I th I think that the monsters are pretty cool and they have some very interesting animations. Did you ever chop the tail of a lava back? No. I I did the the coolest thing I've done so far, speaking of tail cuts, I had us fighting a dread claw with uh, the claw blade. Yeah. And I hooked onto its tail as it was trying to run. And I just attack on Titan this bitch for like 10 <laughs> seconds and cut off the tail as it was escaping. And chat was like, tail cut, tail cut, I tail didn't, cut. I didn't even knew you could cut, you could cut the Dreadclaw's tail because I had never cut it. Yeah. And then on yesterday's stream, I was trying to show people, listen, guys, let me explain to you why the Karakuri staff is not overpowered. And then I fought the chicken. <laughs> And then I went to fight Let the chicken. Let me explain to you how my 3,600 3, damage burst isn't broken. <laughs> no, I promise it's not. The reason, the reason was I was trying to explain to people, see how hard it is to maintain this gauge. And I, and like, you know, I dropped the gauge like four or five times because angry chicken's annoying as hell. So I dropped yeah. the gauge a bunch of times. But when we're coming up on the end, I filled the gauge. <laughs> <laughs> and one fell swoop i like i break his head i chop his tail like bam and kill him yeah, i was that, like oh that weapon is that weapon is so good dude so, so much fun <laughs> and people were like what were you saying again and i was like well may maybe it needs just a little bit of a nerve to just like a little bit <laughs> i mean i think the only weapon i think that adjustments um the cannon's honestly busted the cannon is insane why? Uh, so once you get down, so I, I didn't fully understand the charging mechanic prior. It's actually way more simple than the game would lead you to believe. So the I mean, game you they fire about, and then you shoot the thing and then done. You, you yeah, fire when yeah. it's overloaded, you shoot the thing and then you have the red circle. You immediately right? have the laser. Yeah. 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 Basically, as soon as you, as soon as you, well, so the way that the way that the training tutorial describes it is like, you know, doing a empowered shot while standing in an empowered zone. Yeah, you don't have to. Yeah, no, you just, as soon as you have, have done an empowered shot and that connects, you can vacuum that up and go straight into laser mode. Yeah, yeah. And laser mode does like, like 2,000-ish damage. Um, mm, if you're, what? If you're, so are you firing your laser oh, that's, from Yeah, that, a, that's the thing that people told me that I wasn't doing. You have to stand in the empowered zone. zone. Yeah, no, It'll I like was just firing it from whatever. Laser. No, yeah, yeah. Put, well, not not even an empowered zone. I don't think an empowered zone makes a difference. In no, 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 no. I was just talking about a, a zone, a key zone, a key zone. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. If you're standing in a key zone, the laser instead of being like boom, it's like boom. <laughs> I gotta try that out. It, I'm, I'm not kidding when I say it. it's like triple the duration. It's huge. Oh my! And then God. right after that, you're just like 
Tower Curry glider. Boom, 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 boom. <laughs> Red zone. Boom. Vacuum it up. Laser beam. Boom, boom, boom. Like it's. It, it, so it also example, depends. It depends on the monster as well. Because like I was using yeah. that against Lava Back, which is very, very hard. No, it's. I think. I think in multiplayer, it's gonna. Be yeah, one of exactly. The most broken weapons in the game. But but I think um, that. So, the Karakuri staff is also going to be busted in multiplayer because you just like you dodge yeah. until you get an opening and then you know I was the, fighting, the cannon uh, Karakuri staff. I was, I was fighting Big Boy before this call because I wanted to farm up those uh, the mirror shards and there's yeah. there's a mission on the map you can just refight them. Um, I didn't know you can like force an early kill on his ass with the. Oh, cannon. I didn't know that either. Yeah, with the cannon, when, when she, so it'll you'll still get to the, like the hand phase, and with the hand phase, I just like I hit one hand with a uh, a mortar. Yeah, the other hand wouldn't come down, so I just lasered the hand again, and then just he was dead. <laughs> it was like a, a seven minute kill on it. Oh, that was pretty fast. That's like a that's like a siege event. <laughs> so yeah, that's it's a, pretty that's, busted, man. Uh, the the thing the thing about the the cannon is again, it's both the cannon and the karakuri staff. They're going to be really powerful. In multiplayer, yeah. I feel like they're really going to excel in multiplayer. In in single player, it's a little bit tougher when the monster's on you all the time. But dude, I, I had this one really cool shot that I did once where you know how Lava Back stretches its arms and like yeah, the, the, heats the, himself uh, towards the, you? Yeah. He did arm, that. Attack, yeah. He did that. But in the position that I was, because I had moved a little bit forward when I saw him with the animation, so he flew past me. As he was flying past me, I hit the mortar shot in his crotch. <laughs> it was like, I was like... <laughs> i think the the coolest move i've pulled so far was actually on a rage tail um i was playing with the katana and i got unbound and i don't know what did i what did i press i pressed something and like it was as it was expanding like doing it's like enrage and creating its little tower its little tree mm -hmm. and i like backstepped so i i, I backstepped i framed through that Unbound the katana, threw out the crates, jumped up, came down on top of it with the, the full tear slash, and then went straight into that, like ding, 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 and then did like the shoo, shoo. And like, as I did the like katana finish, that that was the kill right there. I was like, damn, that was that anime is all you, hell. You can get some, some really cool um, scenes in this game for sure. Like, my favorite stuff is still the mall. We barely talked about the mall because you don't like it for some strange reason. How can you it's not just, like it's a not big that I bonk don't hammer? don't like it. It's just, I. The timing is very tight on it. It is. The timing is very tight on it. And You're good. I don't, Isn't that what you usually tell me? <laughs> it's your it's turn, not, no, it's bitch. Not, it's, no, I, I'm good with it. I'm, I'm okay with it. It doesn't just, sound like it. I don't know. <laughs> it's also kind of, it's kind of, kind of plain. It's kind of plain. I mean, when I think about the mall moveset, and feel free to add something if I'm missing something here. We have one, two, three, Ungabunga smash with your base button. Yep. Your Y attack is essentially just to get you in the air and convert into a spin to win. No, you um, can keep repeating it multiple times as well. Yeah, I know, but the damage isn't that high. You're only getting yeah. like what a hundred per per rotation. Um, it's a hundred like, something, sometimes two hundred, depends on the the value yeah, of the weapon. Yeah, uh, yeah. Um, but that's it, and you can switch no. between those. But that so there's that. I mean, you're, you the there's regular the box. just whole. There's the box. Well, the box. Yeah, you jump on box boxes. Jump. It, no, yeah, well, it's, it's like just, that, the damage on that was really low from what I saw. It's it's, it's not fantastic, no. But then yeah. there's one more, and that one. Well, the the, is the, the so springboard good. is identical to just like the Y combo. Yeah, it's not though. it's not the springboard. It's the the stalk the the, the stalker stake. the stake. Yeah, dude. Okay, yeah, I don't I don't have stake, that one yet. So the stake is what. So you shoot this. You shoot the thing. It throws you towards the monster. It, that's what it does. The stake, by the way. You jump on top of it. It fires yeah, it's a little. Attack on Titan. It, yeah, it, it and yeets you on in. Yeah. It, it yeets you on in. So the thing is, once you hit the monster, it jumps. And when you jump, if you do an attack, it's going to be a special attack on certain weapons. Like I said, the bow gets one, the hammer gets one, and I think the katana gets one. I'm not 100% sure on the I'd katana. Be, I'd be curious on, on the purpose of, you, like, how would that weapon work with the claw blade? Because the claw blade already has the No, the, the claw blade doesn't the get it. The claw blade doesn't get anything. There are certain weapons that don't get anything. So, like, the, okay. the karakuri staff doesn't get anything. Uh, and th there's more. I think the cannon doesn't get anything special either. But like with the hammer, and this is a, the thing, this is a, a, a move that requires a lot of skill unless I'm doing it wrong. But basically with the hammer, your character does a spin like this in the air and then just like lands it on the monster. The problem is he doesn't like follow through all the way. So it's almost like 
you jump here, you're hitting like here. This is your yeah, range. Your hands. Your, your hands oh, I'm your sorry. Hands I'm sorry. There you go. You have to like you you jump here. Your range is gonna be like here. So you have to really jump and nail the jump perfectly. But when you hit, it's like the finishing attack on the on the square. That's actually speaking of that's that's one thing I I do like a lot more about this game than Monster Hunter is the the finishing. Like, I don't not when I'm when I'm fighting in Monster Hunter. I feel like the final blow on monsters generally is kind of anticlimactic. Oh, so you like the the actual finishing blow is what you're saying? Well, not not even the whole like hold hold the right trigger and finish it. I like how like when you get that final attack, there's that that sound cue that yeah, yeah, yeah. That, that shit's satisfying. I'm like you're down. Yeah, it it is it is good stuff for sure. I I like it as like, well. I've seen it's like rise. I I kill it and it's just you know victory One music the- and the timer starts and I'm like oh okay. It, it doesn't it's bother very, it's me a very, as much. It's a, hype, like, it's a very hype finish. Yeah. It's a hype finish. It's, it's a hype finishing thing. Uh, but interestingly enough, that was one of the... A lot of people were asking this on my stream. It's like, oh, can I skip that? I was like, what do you mean? <laughs> it's fun. I also <laughs> like how they, they, as opposed to going like capture or kill route, <laughs> it's, it's kill only, but it's a respectful kill. Because your hunter is actually like, I'm sorry. And then it like ends the, the kimono's life. I'm like, ooh. Very, very... Uh, yeah, I'm sure. Sh- we, Weebo, Weebo, respect there. I like I'm, that. I'm, I'm sure that that's what my hunter is thinking. He's like, "Oh, I'm so sorry." As he's spinning the hammer. <laughs> oh! I'm sorry. <laughs> well, like you said, so, 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 chat, chat had me make a, uh, a waifu, for, uh, for the thing, and there she's like, "Go, man." <laughs> yes. <laughs> I was. I, I noticed that when I, when I noticed that on your character, I said, "Oh crap!" She screams in the finisher. That's the first time yeah, I heard she's, that. She's <laughs> angry. I was like, "Oh shit!" That's probably she's you might want to have to edit that. Someone's gonna get their ears blown out by me yelling. Uh, it's <laughs> fine. Don't worry about it. I'll I'll figure it out. I'll I'll see the the audio and I'll edit that. But yeah. But um, have you have you have you chosen a waifu yet? Is it uh, Kogyuku or Suzuran? Uh Kogyuku is the one in the store, and Suzuran. Is, is the researcher the, lady. The researcher lady. Okay, oh, so I'm before I answer that question, how old is Natsume? <laughs> the blacksmith? Mm. Yes. Well, so there's, there's a mission where, uh, about how like uh, Ujishige rescued her as a kid. Yes. So I don't know. I think she's still young. She looks too, too I don't know, maybe 18 if you're lucky, Rory. <laughs> maybe it's maybe if you're lucky it's it's but not Suzu, suzeron suzeron's a grown-ass woman oh yeah Suze, suzeron I, I was like oh damn i would i would, I would do things to suzeron i'm just oh saying i would that she is that she is prime tier waifu material but kogyuku is also very high in the waifu scale Dude. Kogyuku, I would, I would Kogyuku is shady. I think Kogyuku would have you killed know, if you did something, something wrong. <laughs> there's something about that. Like, I feel like she, I don't know, <laughs> about a little bit of danger. It's a little spice. Yeah. Is, this, is this episode go live on Valentine's Day? Is this the Valentine's Day special? <laughs> <laughs> no, it's probably not going to go live today because I got to go pick up my kids soon. So, no, I'm sorry. <laughs> But anyway, um, the point is, uh, until this point, like I'm about um, not even 30 hours in because I, I also lost about 10 hours of progress because of uh, different region saves and other stuff. But um, about 40 hours in for me, how many hours are you in, give or take, total? Uh, let me see what Steam says. Steam says 12 hours played and 25 before, so 34. 37 almost 40. yeah so so we're both coming up on on 40 like i'm probably a little bit past 40 but in age as well as it turns out um <laughs> the game i mean the game i the, it, it's it's i think i'm easily gonna get the time i've spent in a monster hunter game out of this just based on what i've seen i'm gonna be hunting and making guides and trying out weapons and different armor and shit like i'm i don't know i think i think the 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 biggest thing that's going to hold this game back by far is going to be the performance. Yes. I because think so. I'm going to I'm gonna enjoy the shit out of it. I am not your typical use case with this kind of PC, but I'm having a blast. And it's, I mean, but that was the, uh, something I was thinking about earlier when we, were, when we brought up performance is like, it would suck if this game doesn't succeed because of the shitty optimization, because the, the, uh, the core of the game 
the Karakuri and the hunts and whatnot. It's Shit really like, good. It, it's fun. It's very yeah. fun. Like it's, I, it's good. A lot, a lot of people I see, they're like, oh, I don't want to be building. This is Fortnite. This, but this is not like Fortnite no. at all. There are mechanics yeah, in the game, which you actually you actually had to explain one of the mechanics to me because I didn't understand it. The friggin' hunter's arm thing, where you can oh. grapple onto monsters, dragons, dogma <laughs> style, rip, rip and extract ex extract karakuri from them, and it also extracts uh, potions as well when you do that. And it so, gives you better uh, better talisman drops as well. Yeah, there, there's like a ton of there's a ton of stuff that where you're not gonna feel like oh I I have to build this thing and it's annoying and it's like no it's it's a natural mm -hmm extension of what you're doing and there's even more complexity than just building because at some point in the game you have to choose which of the karakuri you take and that is going to uh change the things that you have access to like yeah. uh, once, once you replace it's, one then you don't have access not, to certain functionality and it's it's yeah, really it's cool. almost going to be like when you're choosing which moves which wire and, bug moves you and, want and here's in a sense here's another thing that i don't know if you knew that you can do at the mall you can throw karakuri at the monsters. I did know you can do that, and that's one of the reasons I don't like it. <laughs> it's it's I, weird, though. I have, you, you I have my battle weirdest... arena set up with my dodging and my fires and my crates, and then the mall's like, yeet, and it just slaps everything, and I'm like, well, fuck, that's it's all gone. It's all gone. <laughs> Like, you know how fucking annoying that's going to be in multiplayer? Katana bro <laughs> tries to make his tire to tower and the mall guy just comes up and he's like, not today, weeb man. Tower gone. <laughs> you're just, that sounds like you're just saying positives. I don't know what you're talking what, like, what, about. So what is, what sounds like, a good like if you were to, let's say you, you bonk a See, crate into a, a, a kimono, what kind of damage are you getting? It's not much because I, I've, I've done it and it's at this point, at least it's not much. But the thing that bothers me the most about that, because that's actually a complaint that I have. You know that there's a bomb fusion karakuri that you get to do at one point. The little star thing that, that goes in the, the, and then it explodes. Yeah. So I finally unlocked that and I was so excited. I was like, oh my God, I have the bomb now. This is it. This is you can't throw that one. <laughs> I was like, well, what do you mean? This is, this, this is the only one speaking, you want to throw. Speaking of, of throwing, have you figured out a use for the launcher yet? Uh, no. I mean, you can launch yourself. That's about it. I know, but it's not, it's not far. You might as well just use a flying vine. I yeah. launched my, I, I locked it. I was on the, uh, you, know the, you know the initial starting point on the, uh, the ocean level? Yes. I was like, I'm going to launch myself over to where the grit dog's at. And instead it launched me like 10 feet just into the water. <laughs> yes. like, that, that's it. That's, that's what the fucking launcher does, bro. Like, like in the big boy I fight, think, they were launching, they were launching things like, like 50 yards. Yeah, exactly. That, that's the thing. I think that it's going to unlock like other Karakuri that you'll be able to put in there and then it'll throw yeah, that. Like you launch launcher and bomb it or something. Or, yeah. Or yeah. Make the fusion on, but you know, that might be it. What if you make, you use the launcher. I tried put putting fusion the fusion Kukuri bomb on it. No, no. I, I couldn't. The, here's the weirdest thing. When you jump on the, on, the, um, on the launcher, before you go ahead where it launches you, right? I was like in the yeah. back and I was trying, okay, let's put boxes in here, see what happens. You can't even put boxes on it. So I don't know how you're supposed to get the payload in there. Yeah, but, it's, but I think, it's weird. I think that that is, again, is going to be one of those things that's going to be a multiplayer weapon, but I still don't know exactly how you're supposed to use it. But, yeah. you know, right now you use it for transportation, but it's not that great. The vines are better. So I don't know. I, I've used it like because I have a camp on the third zone on top of like a, a really tall building. I'll just like yeet myself off of the building, <laughs> Batman style, and then pull out the I, glider. And it's like, here I go. My, dude, my favorite, my favorite base so far on that, uh, on the ocean level, I climbed all the way up onto that like coral overhang. Yeah. And I made a base up there. <laughs> so there's a base up there and it's like a zip line this way, a zip line this way, a zip line this way, a zip line this way. And I'm like, I can, I can see that one. Why make multiple base when one base gets you where you need to go? <laughs> I need, Any I need direction. to optimize, I need to optimize some of those maps because the only map that I put on lockdown so far is the first one, because yeah. I'm recording, right? So you know, when I'm recording, I'm not really like going around. Oh, let me just spend two hours figuring out the exact position of where I'm putting. See, that's exactly things. why I abandoned my first playthrough. I started recording it, and then I was like, you know what? There's, there's just too much. There's too much of me just fucking around. Yeah, but uh, I'm what gonna I'm going to do instead. is because, you know, at night I always go home. I can't record at home. I'm like, okay, so at night I just boot it, boot it up on the console and just spent like a bunch of hours yeah. in there just optimizing stuff. And then on the recording the next day, it's like, okay, guys, check out this really cool thing I did. Did this camp like this, that camp like that. It's all cool your, all your I setup. Really dig it. Yeah. 
I, I dig it. I dig it a lot. But yeah, it's 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 one of those things. Like I understand that a lot of people are hesitant, and if you are hesitant, don't get it right now. Get it when it's discounted yep. or something, because it's also very expensive. But fundamentally, I think that it's a pretty good game. I think that it's going to get me. Like let let's put it like this: If I hadn't gotten a, a review code and if I had bought it myself, I think I'd have gotten my money's worth out of it. Do you? Um, off topic. Um, so I mean, obviously, there's the parry. And the spring has good dodging. How do you feel about the regular dodge? Because at first I figured there were no iframes at all, but I was there's dodging iframes. some. I was dodging some attacks yesterday. Like there's tons of iframes like a, actually. When you compare it to Monster Hunter, there's way more iframes on this yeah, dodge. Like there, like, like, like the, the belly. I, I think I think the thing is my my preview time when I was playing. I think I just wasn't as familiar with attack times. Yeah. Because the more I play, the more I'm I'm hitting dodge rolls through shit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You can, I mean, the springboard you can, is the springboard's insane iframes. Yeah, it's the like the, is, the regular dodge in um in this game is somewhat similar to bubbly dance dodge in Monster Hunter, which is even more powerful than Evade Window Five. So it's like at, at least that's what I'm getting because, yeah. for instance, you know how when the grit dog does the bomb. And you basically yeah wanna, yeah I did that's you that's just what made me think you it, just spam you just spam dodge you just spam dodge yeah. because as soon as your character can move he'll always dodge it every single time and there are other things that he does where you can also do that and you'll always get away from it I've dodged the big pound explosion I've dodged tons of stuff so yeah it's actually very kind about the amount of invincibility frames the thing is you still have to time it you still have to time it somewhat yeah because otherwise it'd be busted. But yeah, it's pretty good. But anyway, I uh, I also got to go pick up my kids soon. So uh, it was really nice. Thank you for making the time to chat about Wild Hearts. Guys, Wild Hearts, I think it's recommended from both of us right now because it's just a really fun game. Assuming that you have a PC powerful Assuming enough you to can play run it. it. Yeah, or th a PS5. that's the thing. Or a PS5. A PS5 on performance mode it also runs it pretty decently. Well, so. Xbox, don't you? I think, I think Game Pass gets access to that like EA Play trial. So yeah, yeah, yeah. If yeah. Have, if, if you have if the you game have Xbox, I think it, I think trial. you need I think you need game uh, Game Pass Ultimate. I'm not 100 percent sure because I've seen something about, and I know that there's been complaints about the demo as well, which is a shame because there's a lot of people that like they're buying the the pro version or whatever because the pro version supposedly has something like unlimited access with the pro version, and I think what they it's, meant it's a, by it's that unlimited, well, the part, it's unlimited access when the, the game demo is out. No, but I think I think they meant unlimited access to the demo, and I think some people are interpreting it as unlimited access to the game. I'm yeah. not well, sure. I mean, I'm not sure what they're doing, they, but there's so they, there's wording there that they should have made it clear, and there's a lot of people that aren't being able to play the demo. So as well. is it well? Because I feel like I've seen people that aren't content creators just playing it. Like I feel like you can. Did, did they actually the game? See this? Hang on a sec. The game. You on, mean? Let me pull up the, the review. The review guide. There was a a timing thing. Let me see. Yeah, there was. I think it's at the very end. I'm scrolling through it right yeah, now. Yeah, it's, it's, it's at the very end. There was something that said something about the times. Okay, so uh, EA Play, first play trial. Power Curry Edition and Standard Launch Edition are the 16th. Yeah, see, that's rolling, what I'm saying. Rolling Midnight Launches. So, so there's no... Yeah, so I think right now... Well, so I don't... Yeah, I don't know. There, it's, it's weird. It's if weird. there's people anyway, playing, there might be some retail store that broke street date or something. That might be where yeah. there's people playing. But other than that, yeah, I, I know that there's been confusion with the way they handled the demo, which, again, is a shame because these are all things that people are going to remember. They're going to be like, oh, the, the way they handled the demo was terrible because I've already seen tons of comments of people telling me like, oh, they're handling the demo terribly. I can't stand this. Like some guy was talking about how he installed friggin' Origin and I was like, what are you talking about? Or, or yeah, Origin, Origin Sunset. You can't even, as far no, as no, I know, I don't think they he, even he, it he said he was able to install the unsupported version of Origin and was able to play the game for like 90 minutes. And I'm like, bro, this shouldn't be this hard. <laughs> this is wild. Yeah. Honestly, I mean, at the, at the end of the day, my biggest takeaway from this game is I'm having fun playing it. And yep. even if even if you... Even if you don't like it, even if you don't want to get it, you should be happy it exists because yeah. it's another game in the hunting genre. And the fact that they are offering crossplay and free content support should light a fire under Capcom's Basi ass to be better. Basically, so this, is, this, is a, this is a net positive for yeah. fans of the hunting genre. This game being good, which is something that I think a lot of us didn't see coming. I think most of us were looking at this game as kind of like, uh, whatever, you know, we'll play yeah. it. We'll see what it's like. 
and now that we have played it, we're like, this is this is actually really fun. This is a really fun game. I think that the fact that that has happened is something that is important because now, you know, Capcom is going to be even more like, okay, we got to really step it up. Let's go. Let's make it even better. And this type of competition is just usually generates better and better games. That's the way that I look at it. Yeah. Anyways. Competition breeds innovation. Yep. But that is going to be it. I got to get the hell out of here. Got to get my kid. Thank you all very much for watching. There's going to be a link to all things Cowboy in the description below. He's going to be playing Wild Hearts, creating all kinds of content as well. And, and amounts of content. And, and then there's also going to be Wolong, of course. That's going to be awesome, oh, too. God, I can't fucking wait. <laughs> but uh, that's going to be it for this video. We'll see you guys in the next one. Stay strong. Stay safe. Peace out. Adios, folks.